Hello everybody, today we're going to be diving into context within Power BI, what it means, how to understand it, and how it can be starting to help improve your reports so that you have a better understanding of what you're putting on the report page. So let's get into uh, briefly what we're going to go over, the model that we're working with, and then we'll get into exactly what context is. So what we're going to go through is kind of what we're showing at each of these cells, how these values are being calculated, and what type of different context is being used. So why is this count showing 699 for this one client, and then this count for their last year value showing 382? What was What context is causing that, as opposed to the month and year count of orders showing 9200, and then the last month count of order showing 8,700, right? Where are those counts coming from? How are they being calculated? And the context is how those things are being calculated in combination with DAX, and we'll kind of go through what context means um, and the three different ways context can be looked at. So just quickly going through the model here that we're working with. We are very basic model. We've just got a date table connected to our orders table, so our fact orders table, and then a lookup clients table that is related to our orders, right? So very basic model. We'll just filter some of our data by the dates and by the clients. So first, getting into context, we, you have to understand the relationship that you're working with in order to understand our context, right? So our clients are going to filter our orders as well as our dates will filter our orders, right? So those are the two kind of main concept points that we need to understand from our model. What is going to filter our fact table and how are the tables related based on the measures that we're making? So going through context, there are three different types of context. There's row context, query context, and filter context. Row context is very it, exactly what it sounds like, right? It's how an individual row is calculated. So row context can pretty much be thought of um, very similarly to Excel cells. So if you're coming from an Excel world, how Excel cells are calculated by that exact Excel kind of row values in your calculation. So the best way to think about row context within Power BI is if you're using a calculated column. So within Power BI, when we create, let's go ahead and just delete this. We can create this on our own. So if we want to create a calculated column within a new table, right, the, what the context that we're going to be using on that table is row context because calculated columns take the row context, so each individual line item for its calculations, including any other tables that are related to it. It's related by that single row that you're on, right? So it's the row context. So if we want to add a value in here that's calculating a certain value. So let's say the cost per unit, right? So we have the number of units and the total shipping cost, but we don't have the cost per unit, right? So let's go ahead and create that calculated column. And we will just go ahead and use a divide shipping cost divided by number of units to get the cost per unit. And then so each of these calculations in row context are providing the value that we're looking for, right? So the context of this calculation of this specific cell right here is this row. This is its context because we're calculating the values based off of this line items context, right? So that's row context. Easiest way to think about it is just calculated columns. Each row is calculated within a specific context of that row. The next one um, we are getting into is query context. So query context is when we start to get into kind of the Power BI engine and the power the Power BI has behind it. So what query context is, is the columns and headers. So the headers and rows that you have on your table will determine what values are being calculated. So for instance, if we've got year two, 2021, selected so think of that as our header on our table and then the rows are our client values the query context for each of these values within this count of orders measure is the date that year selected up there in our date slicer this is one query context and then the client so whatever value we have on our table so, right, so if we remove client, if we remove that query context from this table, you'll see that the values of each of these measures completely changes. And then if we put it back on, we can see that those values are still down there, but they're the total. Because our context that we've added onto the page, the query context that we've added onto this value are the client names for these measures. So these measures now calculate these total values but in the context of the client name. And that goes back to the relationship that we have, the client is related to orders.
right? So that's that's where query context comes into play. So looking at these calculations, nothing on this calculation is uh, affected by query context, right? So these these calculations we'll get into later, but the query context is defining the value within the measure. So this 179 is being defined by that query context on the visual. So like going over here, just flipping values real quick, you can see kind of the difference between the context of those measures. So if we look at this measure here, we can see that those totals still equal each other, right? We got 203,000, 203,000. So our totals are still the same, but our context on each of the tables are completely different. So on this table, we'll show 17,000 for July, but then on this table, we'll show the total that we filtered for. So we're adding query context to this visual now. We've now filtered for July 2021, adding query context to this visual, which now brings the total to 17,000, but then the visual still has client context, so it still includes the client context for all of the different values. Right, so that's where query context comes into play. It's very important to understand the model um, when you start getting into query context, because that's when everything will start filtering all of the other values and all of your other tables, and your query context will change so that you can understand the different values and start getting into some in-depth analysis. And the last one here is filter context. So query context, one of the biggest um, biggest things to understand, right? We have to understand how our measures and values are being calculated. But then within a measure, so let's look at this count of orders, within a measure, you're able to add additional context on top of query context that will further change the value that you're calculating. So within a measure, we're able to calculate that base measure, so that count of orders measure, we're able to still calculate that measure, but then add on additional filter context with filter functions to then change how the value is being calculated within its query context. So the query context for this measure is still the same, still year 2021 with this client <clears throat> by row, by line item, right? That query context is the same between these two measures. The only difference is we've added this filter context to the measure to now include a value being greater than a thousand on its order, right? So in order for the order to count, its total value has to be over a thousand. And then that's just an extra filter context that has been added to that query context, right? And then looking at a different measure here to kind of understand it a bit better is looking at last year and last month. So this date add function. So let's switch over to this table real quick. So looking at this last month measure here, what this measure is doing, again, just very basic count of orders, and then just moving back the value one month. So let's look at February. So looking at February, our count of orders within February 2021, so the query context for count of orders within February, Feb February 2021 is 9,200. And then if we add on filter context to pull in the last month's value, so we're moving last month's value up one month, we can then get that last month's value and change its filter context on the base measure to bring in January 2021's value to the query context of February. Right, so our query context is still February 2021 but then our filter context within the measure has adjusted the context of our measure to move our value into 2021. And then we can now compare these two values to each other and get some growth rates, right? And then we can start getting in depth. And all of that starts coming once you understand how, con how context works and how it's able to work together to change your values that you're showing on the visual. So all right, that is context within Power BI, very high level, um, very quick introduction to it, but hopefully that gives you a base understanding of how context works within Power BI. Let me know if there are any questions around context and how you can use it in your reports, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.